heard at NAB 2018 at the Sound Devices booth with Kish Patel with Audio Limited. Uh, and we have some exciting new things to talk about here in the wireless world. So um, tell us, first of all, I guess a little, uh, why are you at the Sound Devices booth? Okay. <laughs> uh, well, um, recently, um, Audio Limited were acquired by um, Sound Devices. Um, We've been talking for a while. We've known John and Matt for many, many years, and uh, we're in the same related customer base, if you like. Yep. And um, when we first developed the uh, the 1010 system, uh, we sent the system over to uh, Sound Devices to integrate into the SL6 uh, uh, device that we have uh, uh, on there. And then they liked the technology, and uh, they, we had a chat, and they wanted to collaborate. And in the end, we just ended up saying, "Okay, well, we want we want." your business, we want you to be a part of that business, and so the result is uh, Audio Limited has, is now a, a sound devices company. Very good, very good. I think that's uh, hopefully really good news for all of us because, I mean, so you had already integrated into the, the super slot system here. Yes. Um, but now you have a new generation wireless system, and I'm really curious to kind of like, what are the high level, okay. what do we need to know about it? Uh, so we have a, a two channel, true diversity, uh, fully digital system, so we are digitally uh, sending the RF um, through um, uh, instead of a FM analog yep. uh, or digital hybrid, which still uses the FM analog to, uh, method of doing things. We are a fully digitally modulated system. So, um, but one of the, uh, one of the really unique things about our system is that we designed the modulation scheme, um, and what that has allowed us to do is to pack um, 15 channels of uh, wireless working together in one yeah. six megahertz TV uh, channel. So. Okay. That's fairly unique. Um, without the, uh, the long delay, uh, so it's two milliseconds end-to-end -end delay, full audio bandwidth from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and great um, range. So, um, and the the user interface also on our system is very very friendly. It's very easy to use, uh, and apart from knowing which channel to select before you go into the menu system, that's as difficult as it gets. So it's very intuitive in, in the way it all works. Okay, very good. So, so I guess for first thing about digital um, is that companding is a kind of a scheme that wireless has used for years and years and years. Yes. And for those that don't understand, it's a basically they compress the audio and then they uncompress it back at the receiver. That's right. Audio-wise, it's not always the best thing, but no. you bypass that altogether. Absolutely. So now we have um, a studio quality preamp on the transmitter with an analog limiter. So we actually make sure that you know that the A to D is not going to overload yep. uh, and go into chronic distortion. Uh, that's not a good thing. So uh, from that perspective, it, it really does give you a huge dynamic range uh, without that uh, that compounder artifacts. Uh, and, and, and even though Audio Limited is always known for, in the film community, for having the highest audio quality, so we think we've actually surpassed that with this new A10 range. And that's the feedback we're actually getting from the film mixes as well. Very good, very good. Um, some other things that are kind of interesting too, um, here, this setup here, for example, so it looks like you can supply phantom power from the transmitter. That's to correct. So we have effectively uh, on the transmitter, we have uh, circuitry which allows us to select Lavalier microphone, uh, balanced mic input, balanced line, and then 48 volt phantom and 12 volt phantom. Uh, okay. And it will power the really uh, the, the, the hungriest of, uh, of uh, microphones like the Sheps or, or, yeah. or the Neumanns. And um, the way that it all works is very se seamless and you, you just select um, uh, whichever input it is and um, it gives you that very nice audio quality. Uh, and if you've selected 48 volts and then you inadvertently plug in your Lavalier microphone, particularly if it's a DPA expensive uh, at the top end of the market, um, it actually automatically switches to the valid ah, microphone, okay. so it's a safe, it's built-in safety feature Very as good. well. Very good. That. What can we say about this? So this is, I mean, this is kind of a new frontier. It's not a new yeah. frontier in some ways, but there's always, it feels like, a potential for sacrifice in audio quality when you're going wireless with your boom. Because, you, you know, the boom is really kind of the staple, and it's sure. that's yeah. the, the golden reference track. But now we're doing it wirelessly? Well, now we're doing it wirelessly. Um, we believe uh, the audio quality is really uh, as good as a, as a wire, and um, our first sales uh, actually have been to film sound mixers who have now gone wireless on the boom. So one of the things that we've heard about is that you know they fade up the, mix, uh, uh, the fader on the mixer, and suddenly they, they're expected to hear that wire, typical wireless uh, audio quality, but they don't. They hear a wire uh, coming up. So that's the feedback we're actually getting from a lot of people at the moment. Fantastic. Great. Okay. Um, we also dual channel on the receiver as part of the system, um, and then it looks like it comes in two flavors. 
Yes, we've got the uh, the standard unit um, comes with a 25 pin D type, so okay. that, that gives it um, SL6 compatibility. Okay. Or into camera, um, the, the Panasonic uh, cameras have a, a slot in there, so that will work in there as it's uni slot compatible. Um, but also, um, if you if you don't have that ability, if you you know you're loose in the bag yep. um, or on a cart, you still have the ability to put that adapter on the unit. So essentially, you've got a um, a 25 pin D type on the bottom yep. there, and you just substitute the okay. XLR version, so you can externally power it and give you both the audio outputs on okay. the bottom there. Okay, very good. Um, but we've also got the ability on, on the receiver, you can switch it um, from analog to AES output. Um, when you AES on, on the XLR version, you um, just put out AES signal on channel one. So okay. it's a very simple uh, okay. system so to pure use. pure digital path at that point. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And the receiver is actually fully full bandwidth as well. So it covers a new 470 to 608 meg uh, switching bandwidth. Um, so you've got the ability to uh, com completely cover the whole range. And the transmitters come in two bands, so A band and B band. The A band covers from 470 to 550, okay. and the B band covers 518 to uh, 608. So it's, it's fully covered in that aspect. Very good. The transmitter is actually um, a pretty nice size. It's yes. not, I mean, it's, it's, it's something that I think you could easily put into an Ursa strap, um, yeah. a body, and yeah. it's pretty, it's rounded too. Yes, yeah. I mean, we've always had the philosophy that, you know, it's going to be body worn. Uh, that's how we started out from. And um, we wanted to make sure that when it's on the body, it is actually comfortable to wear because, you know, one of the things that we've uh, got feedback from sound mixers on, on films and, uh, and drama is, you know, um, actors don't like lines which are just square. Um, so we've always adopted a, a, a rounded uh, form factor. And, and people, you know, say, yes, it's big, but it actually feels very tactile and it will disappear under clothing. Um, so that's the reason why we've done, we've done that. Very good. It runs on what type of battery? Uh, you've got two AA batteries. Okay. Um, so you've got, you've got the choice of alkalines, nickel metal hydrides, or lithium okay. uh, energizers. Uh, and and uh, lifetime-wise, uh, typically at 50 milliwatts output power, um, you'll get about four and a half hours on, on nickel metal hydrides and just over seven hours on uh, lithium. So, oh, very good. Okay. Uh, so yeah, with the nature of digital uh, requires it to be uh, more power hungry right. because uh, the output stage on the transmitter needs to be very linear. Uh, and consequently on the receiver as well. So people will ex uh, will experience that it is more power hungry, but it is the future because um, analog is not going to survive this this next stage of changes. And um, you know, this, um, the regulators are now telling us F FCC here, Ofcom in the UK, and other regulators around the world. So you need to make much more efficient use of this spectrum. Yep. And with the uh, with the modulation scheme uh, coming out, we are going to have to be much more efficient. And we believe when you've got 15 channels working to, into a 6 megahertz TV channel, that's the future. That is, yeah, and you're there. So yeah. you also mentioned it's very, uh, the user interface is very simple to use. Can yes. you talk about that a bit? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, on, on the system, we have um, a, an OLED display. And um, to go into the, to, to the menu, it's a very simple just, um, click, and you just click a frequency gain, yep. audio setup. I mean, it's all there. It's and all very you, simple. Yeah, yeah, very simple in, in settings. So. I, I, uh, we've yet to have people saying, well, I need a user manual to use this. So it's, 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 it's great. That is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and then there was a, another thing. I think you mentioned something about um, there is a way to control the body pack. That's correct. We, we have an app uh, which is available for iOS or Android. Uh, it's a Bluetooth connection to the transmitter, uh, which allows you to control all of the settable parameters, so microphone gain, you've got the ability to actually name the transmitter, okay. and actually that metadata also gets sent to the receiver, so you can actually view who it is that you, you're recording with all the, uh, the, the settings of LF cut, um, and you can also change the frequency from there, put it to sleep, so it's a bi-directional thing. Yeah. But it is it is uh, limited range, so you know it's not designed to be long-range communication, right. it is right. more about putting the transmitter on the body and being within a, a six-foot maximum range. Right. But still, that's very useful from the standpoint that now, if we're taking a break, I can go up to the you know the actors and, and get things where they need to be for yes. the next when we start shooting again. Very yeah. good. Um, anything else about A10 that you'd like to cover before we wrap up? Um, essentially, uh, we, since we brought it out in January, you know the sales have been fantastic. Um, and, but immediately, as soon as we had it out there, people said, "Well, I'd like to be able to use it uh, portable, but also plug it into an SL6 or uh, on the cart. I'd like a rack." So we 
we are actually at the moment developing a four four way uh, one U rack uh, with um, RF distribution built in and also Dante. So hopefully we're going to address that aspect of the market as well. Very good, very good. Kish, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you very much. Thank you.